Hi everyone, you are welcome to Dementia 11. Well, I would have loved to make this the last of all the presentations as far as dementia is concerned. But we might have one or two after this because this is the father of them all. Alzheimer disease. Alzheimer disease. The pathology or pathogenesis of Alzheimer disease is still unclear. They were sure of certain things that there is overproduction of amyloid beta peptides and also that of tau proteins. Neurofibrillary degeneration and neurotic plaques are important neuropathological changes. Still on pathogenesis of Alzheimer's disease, you can determine if Alzheimer's disease is mild, moderate, or severe based on the following. One, when you know amyloid beta plus distributions and neurofibrillary tangle distribution stage with neurotic plaque density score, you can use those three parameters to determine the level of severity, either mild, moderate, or severe. In some patients with Alzheimer's disease, Lewy body's deposition is found in amygdala. Still on pathogenesis, there is possibility of oligemia, and that means there is possibility of decreased blood volume, which will lead to aposemia or ischemia, leading to vascular brain injury. So, vascular brain injury is also associated with Alzheimer's disease. The epidemiology is essentially that Alzheimer's disease is the most common cause of dementia. Almost 60 to 80 percent of them. One of the leading causes of morbidity in elderly people and also one of the leading causes of mortality in elderly people. Alzheimer's disease increases with age. So the older you become, the more the likelihood of coming down with Alzheimer's disease if you are having other predisposing factors. It is worldwide. So no racial predilection here, no regional isolation. It is worldwide. And it is affecting tens of millions from almost 20 to about 40 or 50 millions are affected worldwide. The incidence is twice after the age of 60. There is a period of grace, and that is the pre-symptomatic period could be as long as 10 to 20 years. In other words, the individual will be having some memory complaints. Now, the individual will notice that the, there is decreased level of memory acquisition. In other words, there is mind memory impairment for almost 10 to 20 years before full-blown symptoms. There are risk factors here. Besides the genetics, it's possible hypertension could be a culprit. High lipid, high cholesterol, or hyperlipidemia generally. Cerebrovascular accident, that is stroke, particularly ischemic stroke, diabetes mellitus, traumatic brain injury, amyloid doses or amyloid deposition, smoking, obesity, and sedentary lifestyle. With all these risk factors listed, you must have been taking the guess that so 
Alzheimer's disease is somehow related to vascular dementia? Well, you're not too wrong because there's possibility of combined vascular dementia and Alzheimer's disease. Still on Alzheimer's disease and genetics. Alzheimer's disease is familiar and it has autosomal dominant inheritance. Three genes have been identified so far and they are amyloid because of protein, presenilin 1 and presenilin 2. There is interaction between genetic factors, environmental factors, and epigenetic influences. Though the above genes, which means amyloid precursor protein, presenilin 1 and presenilin 2, have been identified, but the full details of its inheritability is not completely understood. No problem preventive measures of today and no cure. So probably you don't have to waste your time to have genetic screen. Still on you no know, Azama disease and genetics because that's very very vital. Family history about 10 to 30 percent increased chance of developing Azama disease if you have a first degree relative who has been diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. Sad to hear that. But if the first degree relative develops Alzheimer's disease at old age, like 85, then the risk is very low. And the risk you have is just like the risk of every other per person in the general population Familiar predisposition is worse in blacks. Is worse in blacks than whites. There is an early onset form of Alzheimer's disease, and it is believed that autosomal dominant inheritance is responsible for that. There's late onset Alzheimer's disease as well with genetic factors and associated environmental factors. The epigenetic influences means there is modification of gene expression, not that there are changes in genetic code itself. Diagnosis. Definitive diagnosis is only possible at autopsy or post-mortem. It depends on where you are on the surface of the earth to say it is autopsy or post-mortem. It is clinically diagnosed with the following. History of slow onset. If you have gone through other presentations on dementia and some different types of dementia like Crufer Jacob disease, Lewy body and the rest of them, the onset is not this slow. There is going to be decline in memory and, of course, functional impairment. We have what you call mini mental state examination. And I paused a while because I was thinking I should go into details of that, but I'm going to make that in another video. Mini mental state examination. We have to rule out dementia with low body, rule out vascular dementia, frontotemporal dementia, delirium, or neurodegenerative disorder. A typical cause is associated with cognitive decline that will be sudden in onset or there will be no good history. Still on diagnosis, the preclinical Alzheimer's disease, we have brain that has the deposits, but no clinical symptoms. That could be detected by biomarker measures. And I'm going to get the biomarker measures in this way. 
you do lumbar puncture for CSF and you check the CSF for tau proteins, that will be increased. The same CSF for photo tau, that will be increased. And PET with amyloid proteins, fluorodiosis glucose, and medical temporal lobe atrophy. Still on diagnosis, we have to rule out reversible causes by doing our glucose to rule out diabetes mellitus, thyroid stimulating hormone disease, apothyroidism, venery disease research laboratory, is it neurosyphilis, vitamin B12 to rule out megaloblastic anemia, secondary to vitamin B12 or pernicious anemia. Electrolyze, this could be hyponatremia or apocalcemia. Urinalysis or urine MCS to rule out urinary tract infection because in elderly people, confusion could be the only feature of urinary tract infection. HIV because of the possibility of HIV dementia complex. Liver function test because of possibility of hepatic encephalopathy and toxicological screening for many medications, including alcohol. You do the CTA and chest X-ray because chest X-ray for the possibility of pneumonia. Pneumonia may not present with high temperature and typical features can only be with a, a kind of confusion like urinary tract infection when it comes to elderly people. And magnetic resonance imaging to see the amyloid deposition, the atrophy of any part of the cortex. As far as clinical features are concerned, kindly check out my presentation on clinical features of dementia because I don't want to take too much of your time on a single presentation. So if you check my channel, you are going to find the clinical features of dementia. Please kindly go over that. Is applicable here. But briefly, I'll talk about apraxia, which is impaired motor functioning, aphasia, that is language impairment, agnosia, which is inability to recognize things. When it comes to memory, there will be memory loss of recent events when the Alzheimer's disease begins. And as the disease progresses, Though at the initial stage, the long term memory will still be intact, but as the disease progresses and it gets worse, like if you check my presentation on clinical features and the seven stages of dementia, when it comes to stages six and seven, even the long term memory will become impaired as well. So, in severe Alzheimer's disease, long-term memory is impacted, but at the early parts of Alzheimer's disease, it is only the memory event that would be difficult to see. They can't store new information. They can't learn new things. But the long-term event, the childhood events, will still be intact. And that is why someone with Alzheimer's disease for example, someone who has worked in a particular organization in the past might just suddenly remember and then begin to act like one. So that is it with Alzheimer's disease. Please check out with the clinical features in another separate presentation on my channel already. Still on clinical features, orientation. Initially, it will be difficult as far as time is concerned. But later on, the difficulty will involve disorientation as far as place is concerned. And in severe Alzheimer's disease, they might still be oriented to person. In in peer situation, as far as function is concerned, Instrumental activities of daily living will be severely impaired in moderate Alzheimer's disease, 
when they will still be able to handle activities of daily living. Let me come to explain that a bit already. That is in one of my presentations on Alzheimer's disease already. But instrumental activities of daily living is something like banking, making phone calls, you know, you know planning their life like transportation and so on. That will be impaired in moderate Alzheimer's disease. And they will still be good at activities of daily living. And what are those? Transferring from bed, bathing self, you know, feeding self, using the washroom or toilet or gent, depending on where you are on the surface of the earth. Even the activities of daily living will become impaired when Alzheimer's disease is severe. Okay, so judgment will be severely impaired, but that is going to occur late in the disease. We are still on clinical features. There's possibility of behavioral problems like apathy, agitation, aggression, depression, wandering around, delusion, or hallucination. Like if you check my presentation on clinical features, I have explained all this in detail. Um, the treatment, you will also check out my presentation on treatment of dementia. Still on treatment of Alzheimer's disease, please kindly check my presentation, that is dementia 5, that is entirely on treatment. In conclusion, please kindly go over the clinical features of dementia in some of my earlier presentations and the treatment. They are separate presentations because if I have to go over all of them here, we'll be here for an hour or more. But now I just want to conclude that the key is accurate diagnosis. Alzheimer's disease is not one of those types of dementia with sudden onset. No. It's slowly, you know, progressive. And since that privilege is there, make the plan for substitute decision maker that you could trust and your advanced directives on time. Like I said in just a few minutes ago, it is very possible that the memory impairment will be insidious and for almost 10 to 20 years you will just be noticing that some, some things are changing as far as your memory is concerned. That is enough window for any one of us to make appropriate planning ahead of time. Thank you for listening to my presentation. Kindly subscribe so that you can get these presentations immediately they are published. Thank you.